Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're making a looping espresso rig in Cinema 4D. Happy New Year! Before we get started, I just wanted to do a quick shout out to the winners of our 12 Days of Christmas challenge. We had over 200 entries, which is amazing considering it was our first challenge ever and people got involved just for fun. Here's some of the epic work that was created by the winners. There's a link below if you want to check those out. Now that 2019 has just kicked off, we're stepping up our monthly challenge and we have a brand new theme this month. And this time, we've got some fantastic prizes to give away. More details about that after the tutorial. Okay, let's get started. So I posted this little animation up on the CG Shortcuts Instagram page a while back now, but we had quite a few people asking for a tutorial. So I thought, why not? This one's for you, Ben2 Sue Hendra. I probably said that completely wrong, but here we go anyway. If there's an effect you've seen online that you'd like to know how to create, just let me know and I'll see if I can make a tutorial for you. All right, let's do this. Okay, so basically this is the rig we'll be creating. You can see we've got a bunch of holes and a bunch of balls bouncing up and down and it's looping over 120 frames. Nothing special you might say, but if we look over here, you can see that all of this is being controlled by this one Espresso controller. With this, we can easily control the amount of holes in the X and Z axis, and we've got less there. We can also adjust the spacing between the holes. Let's bring that down to 400, and you can see that update. Let's just move that down a bit. And we've also got controls for the hole size. Let's try that a bit smaller, and the sphere radius. Let's bring that right up. And we better make those holes big enough. Okay, I think you get the picture. You could even animate this stuff. So if you stuck a keyframe here, you could make it grow, do whatever you like with it. And it's all happening with this little tag right here. So enough chit chat, let's see how we do it. Okay, here we are in a fresh Cinema 4D scene. Let's go up to render settings and we'll change that frame rate to 24 frames a second. You can make the dimensions anything you want. I'll just leave it at the default for now. We'll hit Control D on the keyboard and we'll change those project settings to 24 frames per second. Then we'll come and extend our timeline to 120 frames and drag this guy out here. And now we need to start making some holes. So let's come up here to our splines menu and we'll grab a circle. Okay, we want our holes pointing up. So let's change the plane from XY to XZ. And that did the trick. Our hole might be a tad too big though. Its radius is 200 centimeters at the moment. Let's bring that down to 18. That's better. And now we need to clone these in the X and Z directions. So with it selected, we'll come up to the MoGraph menu and grab a cloner. Make sure you hold Alt so it's automatically applied. And there you go, we've got some clones, but they are going the wrong way again. Let's take a look at some of the options here. The mode is set to linear. Let's change that to, I think we wanna use a grid array. So now all of our holes are in a grid, but we don't need them going up. So this is the Y direction value here. Let's turn that down to one. And that's looking more like it. We probably need a few more of these in here. So let's change the X value. We'll go with 12 and the Z value, 12 as well. They're looking a bit bunched up, so we'll have to adjust the spacing here. You can do that down here in the size. There's our X value. Let's make that 800 centimeters. And actually we'll make all of these 800 centimeters. Okay, so we've got all of our holes now. But right now everything's 2D. We wanna make it 3D, so we need to extrude them down and give everything some thickness. So with our cloner selected, we'll come up here and grab an extrude. We'll hold Alt so that becomes apparent and applies itself. It hasn't changed too much. There's something weird going on up here. Yet again, we need to change the axis of the extrusion. If we have a look down here, you can see we've got 20 centimeters in the Z axis, but we wanna change this to the Y axis so it's going up. So let's zero that out and we'll put 60 centimeters in here. Okay, so we've extruded one circle. Why aren't the other ones being extruded? All we have to do to fix that is come down here and click on the hierarchical checkbox. Okay, so these don't look like holes yet because we haven't made anything to put the holes into. If we put everything within a bigger shape in our extrude, it should have the inverse effect. I'll show you what I mean. If you think about this as one big shape, it doesn't have any edges yet. So we'll come up here and grab a rectangle. Again, it's pointing the wrong way. Let's change that to XZ. And now we just need to scale this up so all the holes fit inside of it. So grab that scale tool and click and drag out here. Something like that. Now you can imagine if this was a single shape, extruding it should give us the holes we're after. Let's give it a go. 
Let's drag our rectangle into our extrude and turn that back on. It seems to have overridden our circles. If we come and turn that off, there's our extruded circles again. So it's one or the other at the moment. We need to figure out a way to connect these two sets of shapes. And we can do that by coming up here and grabbing a connect. We can hold Alt when we bring that in to automatically apply it to our rectangle. And now if we grab our cloner and drag that into our connect as well, it'll bring those shapes together and we've got our holes. Okay, we're getting there. Let's zoom in here and have a look. I don't like these sharp edges around our holes. So let's go up to the extrude here and under the caps tab, we'll give it some fillet caps or fillet caps. That's probably a bit too big. Let's just bring the radius down to two centimeters in both of those. That's looking better. Okay, we're almost ready to get some spheres in here. But one thing I like to do whenever I use an extrude is turn this option on here, the constrain, just so the extrusion fits to our shape a bit better. Okay, before we move on, we should probably do some housekeeping. Let's rename our extrude. We'll call that surface and our cloner. Let's call that holes. So now we want spheres coming out of every one of these holes. So we can probably recycle our old cloner. Let's grab the holes cloner and holding control, we'll drag that up here. We don't need the circle anymore. We're gonna replace that with the sphere. So let's get rid of that guy. Then we'll come over here to our primitives menu and we'll grab a sphere. Let's drag that guy into our new cloner here. So now there's a clone everywhere there's a hole, but the sphere is a little bit too big. Let's bring the radius down to something like 14 centimeters. It looks like they've disappeared, but if we grab it and just drag it up a bit, there's our spheres, lovely. Now we want some random animation on those in the Y axis. And we also want it to loop. But first, let's hide our extrude and we'll rename our new cloner. It's not holes, it's actually spheres. Then with that selected, we'll go up to the MoGraph menu, Effector, and we'll bring in a shader effector. That hasn't had too much of an effect at the moment. It's set to scale down here, but we want position. We'll turn that off and switch position on. And again, we want this in the Y direction. So let's try 400 centimeters here. And that's made them all go up there. We want it a bit more random than that. So we'll scooch over to the shading tab. And for the shader, let's use a noise. And that's looking a bit more random. This is a similar technique that we discussed in the looping background tutorial. I'll put a link down below for that one as well if you're interested. And the way we made it loop was to go into the noise shader. And if we scroll down a bit, you'll notice if we hit play, there's no animation yet. But if we change this little setting here, the animation speed, let's try two. And now they're moving up and down, but at the end of the timeline, it's not looping yet. Let's just pause that. We just need to change the loop period over here. We've got 120 frames, so that's five seconds in 24 frames a second. Let's put a five in here and we'll give that a go. Cool, it's looping nicely. Okay, now we can come back up here and unhide our surface. Then we wanna bring these spheres down. So let's grab that and move it about there. And if we hit play, there's the basic setup for our animation, all sorted. So now we can start getting a bit fancy and bring in a bit of espresso. So we'll start by coming up here and grabbing a null. Let's rename this guy to controller. And now we need to tell our controller what to control. So basically we want the amount of holes in the X and Z axis, as well as the space between the holes, the size of the holes and the size of the spheres. So the way we're gonna do that is with user data. So with our controller selected, there's a little tab up here, user data. We'll add user data. And then this box is gonna pop up and it might be a bit intimidating at first, but it's actually super simple. So we'll change the first thing in our list. We want this, <coughs> we want this to control the number of holes. So let's put that in here. And the short name will automatically update. We can get a little preview of how our user data is gonna look. If we hold shift and click on the example here, you can see down here, there's our example. At the moment it's set as a percentage, but we wanna be able to just enter a value. So we'll change the unit from percent to real. And you can see down here that's updated and we'll be able to put in any number we want. 
Although if you look up here, we've got minimum and maximum values. So actually we'd only be able to go up to 1000, which I think is fine for now. Let's add some more data. This one's gonna control the spacing between the holes. And again, we want this as a real value. And that's looking fine in the example. You can also set a default value here, so it doesn't go back to zero. Let's just put in 100 for now. Right, we just need two more. Let's add another one. And this is gonna be the hole size. It's a real value again. And one more. You guessed it, this is gonna be the sphere radius. And yet again, that's a real value. And we'll set the default value at 10 on that one. Okay, we're good to go. And if we have a look over here, we've got a new tab under our null. We now have user data. And here's our custom sliders. Although if we play with them now, they're not doing anything. That's because they're not linked up to anything. But we're gonna do that with Expresso. So let's grab our controller and then we'll come to tags, Cinema 4D tags. And right down here at the bottom is our Expresso. And then you're gonna get the Expresso editor pop up. And this is where the magic happens. Basically, we wanna drag anything we want to control into the editor here. So let's grab the controller first because that needs to be plugged into everything else. And if we click on this little red bit, it's gonna give us our different options here. If we go right to the bottom here, we want the user data. So let's go ahead and bring in those four fields we created earlier. We'll just quickly grab those other three. Whoa, that was quick. Now we just need to grab the objects in our list that relate to these four things. So whole size, for example, is dependent on the circle here. So let's drag that in. The number of holes and the spacing is to do with our two cloners. So we'll grab those as well. The spheres cloner and the holes cloner. And the sphere radius, of course, is dependent on the sphere. So we'll bring that guy in. Now we just need to link all of these up. So if we grab our hole size here and drag this out into the blue bit, we wanna link that down here to the object properties and then to the radius. Now let's see if that worked. All of our holes seem to have disappeared. But if we come up and click on our circle, you'll notice that radius has a funny little icon and zero centimeters is set in there now. Why is that? If we have a look at the controller, you'll see the whole size here is zero as well because that was our default. But now we can control that with our controller. Let's just bring this back up to 18 for now. Okay, so what's next? Let's link up the sphere radius. We'll drag that into the blue again and object properties and its radius as well. And you can see they shrunk. That's because they're set to 10 now. Let's adjust that, bring that up to 14. Beautiful. So now we have control of our spheres as well. So just our two cloners left now. So our number of holes are going to depend on the cloner count value. So let's drag that onto the blue of the spheres cloner. And under object properties, we want this guy right here, the count. But remember, we're just going in the Z axis, not the Y axis, cause that's up and down and the X axis. So we'll bring in the X and we'll do this again, but this time we'll bring in the Z axis. And those two are linked. And you can see it's gone a little crazy out here. We just need to link the other cloner so it all matches. So same deal again, X axis. And one more time, the Z axis. It still looks a bit funky out here. So let's go and check our controller. Here's our number of holes, we're on 41 which is probably way too high. Let's bring that down to 10 and that should sort itself out. Now we've got full control over that. Looking good. And of course, if we play, everything's working just the way it should. So now we just need to adjust the space between the holes. So we'll grab our spacing and back onto the blue bit, object properties, and this one will be connected to the size. So this time we want to control the X, Y, and Z with one controller. So we'll just link it to the size directly. Okay, we're almost there. Same deal with our holes cloner. We'll drag the spacing onto the blue bit here, object properties, size, and into the size. And if we move that out of the way, everything has gone crazy again. We'll grab our controller. If you remember, we set the default to 100 here, but that's obviously way too small. Let's bring that up to 1000. And everything's looking good. And that pretty much completes our little rig here. Everything we'd want to tweak is now controlled by a single controller. And you can mess around with this as much as you want to get the look you're after. And best of all, whatever you do, it'll keep on looping. So just have fun.
send me a link if you end up creating something cool with Expresso. And as usual, you can download the project file below to save a bit of time. Okay, now that the tutorial is out of the way, let's talk about our first monthly challenge of 2019. Our last round of winners gave us a selection of themes and our Facebook group have voted. So the new theme is going to be Abstract Shapes. This kind of thing seems pretty popular at the moment, so I'm looking forward to seeing what you create. You have from now, the first Friday of the month, until the last Friday of the month to submit your work. There's a link below with all the rules and how to enter. Now let's talk about prizes. The guys over at Daz3D have been kind enough to sponsor our challenges this year and are giving us some great CG stuff from their online marketplace. First place will win a $100 voucher to spend in the Daz store and be immortalized in our CG Shortcuts Hall of Fame. Second will receive a $75 voucher and third a $50 voucher. And we also have a bonus prize for the most improved artist called the CG Shortcuts Staff Pick where anyone, regardless of skill level and experience, can win a $25 voucher, which will still get you some great stuff from the store. And feel free to use your Daz assets in your own work and maybe even in the next challenge. That's it for now. Looking forward to a huge new year of CG and motion graphics. Good luck with the challenge. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below, or you can leave a like or dislike. <laughs> And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.